Hello, hello, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Marcy, and today we are making some canvases using coffee and some other easy to get materials. So stay tuned. To start, you're gonna need to pick your canvases. Mine are 40 by 50 and 40 by 60 because I'm going to use them specifically to cover some electrical boxes in my house. Then we are gonna use some brackets. These are steel 90 degree angle um, corner brackets and these are to hold the wood together for the framing. You don't need them but um, they're helpful for some corners that are a little rebel. And these are my pre-cut wooden pieces that I just went to the hardwood store and got cut for me. They're just to frame around my canvases. I'll show you more of that at the end. But um, basically just hold them together and glue and then nail them in. And that's about it. Just sometimes you have to put your canvas in there while you hammer so that they stay in place other times you just use the tape and the corner brackets to do it like i did in the top right corner here then you're going to use the little wooden um little pieces that come with your canvases so that you make the canvas part of it stretch to the max so it's not like um loose or it caves when you're using the roller or your paintbrush so this just makes it bit a little bit more tight once you've done that then you get your white acrylic gesso or your clear gesso in this case i am going to use both of them and this is basically to prep my surface i'm sorry i'm moving around my chair because my doggy wants to be with me but um if you don't know maxi <laughs> he's really cute he's a yorkie and very mama's boy so going back to the video <laughs> you just spread the gesso around i don't care if the white mixes with the clear this actually makes it a little bit more interesting and use a cheap brush to do this um you just can't pick and remove the hairs afterwards and now i'm adding instant coffee um you see that i'm using my brayer to do this and this is one for the jelly plate that I got sent a long time ago by a friend here in the community. And um, so thank you so much for this breast and I still use it. <laughs> so what you wanna do is spread the gesso and the coffee around so that you get this sandy color mixed, but also you still want to leave some texture in there so that you can see the coffee. Then you get three different cups, one for acrylic, green color in my case one for black ink and the other one for coffee you want to make this layers a little bit um light and very runny because you're gonna add them to your canvas and you go and then we're gonna blow dry them so we're using our blow dryer just to move the ink around and you make different uh puddles here it doesn't matter if they mix the thing is that you need different um sizes of puddles so that they blow and one color is more prominent than the other so you see here the coffee is mixing with the green and the black is mixing with the coffee but this is just prepping the background we need a very light and runny background because then we're going to use a little bit more of a consistent kind of paint for this so once you have the background that you want you want to add some baking soda to your mixes. This is gonna make so that it's a little bit more heavy and not so runny like before. The baking soda is going to be removed afterwards. That's why we don't need to use any glue or any other type of anything. This is just water and the previous mixes that we had. I'm making the coffee a little bit more dark because I saw that I either even though I like the shade of coffee that we had before, I am darkening this as I go so that it has more volume and texture and it's richer in um, let's say it, it has dimension you know it looks more light and then a little bit darker and a little bit darker and that's what gives it to pop and feel better now the baking soda it's gonna be a bit heavy on, on this so you have the very flowy kind of watery one then you have the a little bit more of body can like texture into it so it makes it hard to blow with the blow dryer which is what we want 
So we want to do runny, not so runny, and then kind of like spread around and stay there, kind of drop. So the more baking soda you add, the better it is because the fun part is that this is going to leave a mark and then we're going to remove the baking soda so that it's not too texture or texture at all in a way. So just keep playing with it. Um, you can add more baking soda to your coffee or to your paint. In my case, I liked the green to be a little bit more, you know, the thicket consistency here. By the way, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you would like me to do more of these tutorials, I I always I'm always painting and doing canvases, so I'll be more than happy to share them with you. And if you like this kind of mixed media videos, then give it a like. If you learned something, that will be amazing. And you can also let me know that. And don't forget to subscribe. So now we're going back to the blow dryer and you see that the green paint barely moves. So that's what we want. Whatever we don't want to move, we add more baking soda to. I also love the fact that I can go from one canvas to another. This is going to change if you like to exchange it later. This is fun. But the fact that it's flowing from one place to the other gives you perspective. Now we're using some white ink. I love the way this ink acts on top of the super runny coffee and the ink it's a bit more heavy so at the same time is giving it you know some body to the paint you see that it didn't move that much so this is my mess <laughs> this is when it's dry and don't worry this is just one of the first things we do the background we're gonna keep building and keep working on this with our inks and our coffee but this is what it looks like when it's really dry. If you want to just let it um, be and work on it on another day, which is what I normally do, because I do have a life and I have kids, <laughs> I just put a little bit of that plastic cover from the canvases on top and use my tape to tape them up and they're all good to go for about a week. So now I'm making more because I let the week pass by and I couldn't reuse them for this specifically. I used them for something else, but I still have some left anyways. Me, my life. <laughs> so now we're using the lightest, thinnest sandpaper to sand away that baking soda that it was stuck to our canvases. Remember, we wanted the color, not the texture. If you want the texture, you can use the gesso and add baking soda to that so that it will stick your canvas and will not be falling off because if you just use water it will fall off easily like you see here. So now I switched the canvases around and I don't know if you've noticed but then I'm using really um, runny coffee to just splash it around and give it more um, body. I also do the same thing with the ink and this time we're going to be using a old piece of towel you can also use a burp glove if you have kids or a kitchen towel, a rag, as long as it absorbs the coffee so that you can like pour it specifically where you want it and like flick it around and move it around. Um, the point is that you need to remove some of the coffee from the middle so that it goes to the sides and you can keep adding to the middle. I'm moving it here with a paintbrush this helps have different textures in your canvas and different splatters and um, just in general you can use this or you can use your hands I use a combination of both and make sure to protect your um, floor in my case you can work on top of a table but protect it because it's gonna get sticky and the paint will stick meaning the ink or the wall paint or whatever you're using as your white heavy body um yeah paint <laughs> your heavy body um watery whatever it is but the heavy body this is wall paint in my case this is what it sticks to whatever you put it on so be careful with it again with your surfaces and while you add it see how different it is when it moves when i blow on it than if it was runny we want this to make a mark and then be a lot more runny with your coffee or your ink but I apply it directly to the canvas 
in the thick form because it gives it a sense of um, thickness in the painting and you can see a background and you can see stuff underneath and it just builds up see the difference between the left and the right so now I'm gonna do a little bit more of this thicker paint on the left and I'm gonna do a close-up so that you can see what I mean by this moving a little bit slower and then when you add something a little bit more flowy with the water it will move a lot more it looks beautiful by the way while while it's moving and while it's really wet so you have to allow it to dry and then look at it and go back to it and do the same thing and keep adding to it and moving it around and then you just let it be for a little while while it dries and then you go back to it because this allows you to have this time in between where you can actually see how the whole um what what's the word i'm looking for here how everything is moving together and how everything is balanced so what you need is good balance and this it's not teachable you'll be able to just feel it and see it so this is how they are looking right now and i feel like and it's more going up so i'm just adding more flowy coffee on top of my semi dry um canvas and what I want is the movement, the flow to show through it. So again, use your paint, use your rack, just keep adding to it until you're feeling it. Um, the composition, if you see to, okay, here's where I do the little close up so that you can see how it moves, how the coffee moves faster and the paints move slower and then they kind of merge and create a new creamy color. So this is what I mean by volume. And if you see to the right, you have white on top, white on left, and white on the right. This is the composition kind of style. You do the rule of three. And it looks really good. Now, if you're seeing how everything is flowing, you can still see the background underneath that creamy see-through white. But you can still see the coffee too. So it just makes it pleasing to the eye that you can see something underneath and how everything it's built up and I, and I know it's time consuming because you need to move and you need to let it dry and you need to look at it again and walk away from it and walk back to it but that's what you need sometimes just to separate yourself from what you're doing and leave it alone and then go back to it now I'm using some ink directly from the inker. Just use a drop and it will flow differently because it's a different consistency. So I'm adding a little bit of water to it so that it flows better and my hair is going in the canvas. <laughs> but it makes a different texture once you do the first blow to it and then when you add that watery feel to it. And now you see that with the black, you have another type of dimension. It looks deeper. Like if you look at it, it doesn't look flat. It looks like it has a body. So this is what we're looking for. Now you, I know that I said that you cannot um, learn this in a way per se, but the more you do it and the more you practice, the more you have an eye for it. So you just need to be patient and keep doing this over and over again even if you do it in a piece of paper first here's the movement that i'm talking about about the watery pieces and the more thick pieces and now i'm just using a skewer to move the paint around and make it flow with the rest of the paint that it's in the middle so kind of like with the puddle and now you see you have the really black underneath and then you have the more flowy black on top and that makes it look kind of like 3D that gets popping at you. Here's my skewer and I'm just moving the paint around trying to give it you know that effect that I want to it. The movement of this just 
it's hard to put what I have in my head <laughs> in words but at least I'm showing you the process if you would like me to show you a slower you know um, version of this process let me know or if you want me to do more canvases and have them you know on the contrary sped up so that they're faster and I'm not explaining much because you already know your stuff then let me know that too if you have any questions about the materials I'll be sure to link them down in the description and don't be shy on the comment section just ask me whatever even if the questions sound silly there's no silly questions if you have a doubt just let me know and I'll be willing to help you and happy to help you and one tip that I can give you um, on this is that don't expect perfect expect better than you were yesterday I didn't start um, having this you know super fun and perfect little canvases on the first try I was learning because the feeling it's something that you just build on so um, some of you sometimes write to me and it's like I'm not an artist I can never do that and okay this is a trick here I'm putting the tape underneath so that I make it run more towards one side and puddle towards that side than to the other feel free to use whatever you have I had the tape on hand but okay going back to what I was saying before um, you write to me saying that you're not an artist and you can never do this I'm telling you that you could and you can totally do this and do whatever you feel like you want in art just don't expect perfect and pretty super good on the first try and if you got it on the first try congratulations that's amazing I'm just telling you that you could do this and come out amazing first second or third try but you could do it don't ever give up this is a little close-up of how everything is looking and I just kept on building layers and this is the result I think the creamy color is my favorite but everything just I kept adding after this I just didn't want to bore you with it <laughs> for the frames here is what they look like I did two nails on each side and I took all the metal brackets from it and then I stained it and I gave it a little bit of a detail with a spoon um, if you haven't seen my plant shelves that's where my spoon trick goes and I only um, stained it halfway the way the part that you were gonna see now when you're gonna put this in you just put the frame down and then push the canvas in it should be pretty snug but in case it is not snug because of whatever reason it was a little bit loosey loosey don't worry you can just put your canvas there and this has happened to me before that the canvas just goes straight through you can like pick up the frame and leave the canvas just add a little bit of hot glue and this will make it a little bit more secure but not so permanent that you cannot change the canvas if you ever get bored of it and reuse the wood because you can totally do that and you'll have art um, to exchange in your home so I ended up using my canvases for my entry for my electrical box so that I could cover it that's why I needed the thick wood but you can do whatever type of wood you like and this is what mine look like maybe next it will be my heater so there's maxi walking to my left and here's how they turned out i hope you like them and i hope you like the video and if you're not subscribed yet hit the subscribe button like it if you like my video and i'll see you next time thank you so much for watching bye